This is a video summary of our case entitled Diagnostic Conundrum of a Ring of Fire. It is a case of a 36-year-old man presented to our hospital with two weeks history of palpitations on a background of three months history of dry cough, weight loss and night sweats. The patient had no medical history and denied any recent foreign travel or unwell contacts or exposure to tuberculosis. His vital signs were normal except for his raised heart rate due to atrial flutter. A chest x-ray showed cardiomegaly and a CT angiogram ruled out pulmonary embolism but indicated a mass surrounding the ascending aorta, mediastinal lymphadenopathy and a pericardial effusion. Laboratory investigation showed a raised cardiac troponin, brain nitrotic peptide and CRP. Viral serology ruled out recent viral infection the serum angiotensin convertase level, autoimmune screen and TB alley spot were negative. Echocardiography and cardiac MRI confirmed mild biventricular dysfunction with thickened basal to mid-inferior and inferior lateral left ventricle walls and pericardial effusion. A heterogeneous mass involving the visceral pericardium invading the left ventricle myocardium with evidence of edema and inflammation and patchy fibrosis on the lead cardium enhancement in the thickened segments were also seen. FDG PET CT showed increased avidity in the pericardium and the left ventricle wall, the so called ring of fire sign, as well as in several thoracic and abdominal lymph nodes and in the blue lytic bone lesions. The patient underwent bone marrow threffin and video assisted thoracoscopy guided pericardial window pericardial, lung and thoracic lymph node biopsies. Histopathology and immunohistochemistry ruled out lymphoma, malignancy, histocytosis and amyloidosis and sealed nails and stains were negative for mycobacteria. A diagnosis of sarcoidosis was suspected histologically based on the lung granuloma. To seek further tissue samples prior to st uh, starting glucocorticoid therapy, the FDG active right inguinal lymph node biopsy ultimately revealed necrotizing granulomatous inflammation and a positive PCR test for mycobacterium tuberculosis. The diagnosis of tuberculous perimyocarditis was established. Quadruple antituberculous therapy for 12 months was commenced. An echocardiography, cardiac MRI and CT follow-up three months after initiating the antitubercules treatment confirmed the full resolution of the left ventricle wall mass with no reaccumulation of the pericardial effusion with the regression in the mediastinal and hilar lymphadenopathy and the lytic bone lesions. Over the 18 months follow-up, the patient remained in full remission. Tuberculosis remains a significant global health problem. The cardiovascular system is a common site of extrapulmonary manifestation with a high mortality. The differentiation of tuberculosis, tuberculosis and sarcoidosis can be challenging due to overlap in their clinical, radiological and histopathological presentations. Multimodality investigations and multidisciplinary management are essential for timely diagnosis and treatment. Thank you for listening.